when you're doing this thing, like having a child ages zero to five, it's probably more stressful in some ways than five to 25, right? So right now, if we think of our business as really like three and a half years old, when you have a three or four year old business, I think of it like a three or four year old child, and it just needs attention to make it successful, to make it survive, to make it thrive. So I don't think of too many hard rules for it, but maybe you guys want to inspire some and we'll have some after this conversation. <laughs> guys hey what's up everybody welcome to episode 39 this is a special couples edition of go live podcast joanna and i are here with paul and mary goodman what's up guys hey guys so excited to be here with you guys yeah man we are too uh super excited i mean thanks for for jumping on and spending part of your friday with us um and i always say paul and mary are like one of our favorite couples in all of dentistry so thanks. Well, thanks. My we grandmother would have loved you, Joanna. You do say that. <laughs> that's your time. You're waiting for my grandmother for everything <laughs> for me, the best of everything. So I appreciate it. Um, hey, it, it was fun because we were just hanging out at your place a couple weeks ago um, on a, a project for your practice, Pennington Dental Associates, right? Um, so tell us a little bit about that experience and and yeah, just kind of was it what you thought it was? Like, how was the whole thing? I want to let Mary go in a second. I just want to set up the context of I do everything to deliver joy to Mary. And, you know, she came to this, she came to this um, event at our Pennington Dental Associates shoot thing, your story-based website, but she met a very special person from your team. So yeah, tell us what you thought of the uh, experience. I thought it was awesome. I was especially impressed with your team that you brought with you, um, your videographer, your photographer. They were just so professional and more than, because we've worked with a lot of talented um, individuals, but more than just being talented at the actual art, which they were, like they were such like warm, friendly, knowledgeable people. They made everyone feel at ease. It felt more like we brought the staff. It didn't feel like we just brought the staff in to do a photo shoot. Like they were excited about it. It was like almost like an event, everyone on the team, you know, got yeah. hair and makeup done. Also, and as someone who's spent a lot of time with dental teams as an owner, you know, we're used to our in-game world where it's like, we're not really know what to do when we're not at the office with patients. So they really brought out the fun, you know, it must be fun. And really, whether it was the patients, the team, getting to do things that were, you know, funny for our pictures, I've seen some things come back. So I'm so glad that we invested our time, energy, and effort in telling our story. You know, I'm really, so I admire about what you guys do at Studio 8. You really bring out this story inside of offices, inside of people in just a really amazing way. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask what your team thought about it because sometimes that's the the tricky part. As you go in, you're like, look, we're doing photos and videos on this Friday. And they're all like, what? Um, <laughs> yeah. They were great. They Everybody was well they organized. Really and, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, really, I think it's normal in the beginning to be apprehensive about people taking your picture and doing videos, but at the end, I just think, you know, they made it so natural and easy for them to do that. One of the things I was saying after that, when I was talking about it, after you guys left, you know, it reframed why we do things together to make these impacts on patients. And I just think, you know, celebrating your own SOAs as a dentist, sometimes no one gives you compliments. Sometimes people don't, patients are frustrated. So really it's nice to get together your team and bring in your favorite patients and just kind of have fun and, you know, remember why you do this. Yeah, yeah. What was the name of the sweet um, little lady patient? Yeah. Like you did a post. What was her name? Yeah. I like adored her. Yeah. She was so cute. Pauline. She's the best. Um, Paul Pauline. Pauline. Yeah. Did you get she's to meet 88, her? 88 years young. Uh, she's got multiple implants. I use her as my uh, implant model. I say, see, Pauline? No, <laughs> Pauline's not too old. She's living her best life. She's wearing her, her oh. yoga pants, going to the market, eating her food. She's really great. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Pennington was such a cute, like, charming town in uh, New Jersey. It's about an, an, oh, 45 minutes to an hour away from yeah. downtown Philly, right? How did you end up there with a the practice? I mean, that's where I was born in central New Jersey. Uh, okay. That's where my, my parents in Ewing, New Jersey, or other practice where I was born, moved to Pennington. Really is like the best of best towns. Like a Mary has been there, you know, town that time forgot in a fun way where, you know, it's like a one street light town, but also as, you know, it's close to New York, close to Philadelphia. So I'm really grateful for my upbringing there. I, I do, I'm kind of allergic to cutting grass and stuff. So I live in a city now, but, you know, I like this suburban field of the practice. You know, my, my brother, 
Those are awesome practice owner. We see our teachers from growing up as patients. We see people that knew us when we were playing sports. You know, I was one of our patients there that you guys interviewed. Yeah. So it really has a fun family feel there. I don't know, Mary, what do you think of it? I love it. It also, I remember maybe it was last year, a couple of years ago, it won like one of the safest towns in New Jersey or yeah. best towns for kids to grow up. It's a great town. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, it was just like being like right between like New York and Philly. Yeah. I was expecting probably something bigger, but it was so cool. I mean, you're right. It's like literally, I think it was one stoplight. Yeah. Right? I mean, because I was flying the drone around and it was in this old church and cemetery and yeah. kind of old downtown, kind of like, you know, like um, uh, you know, just lined up like old town street, like main street type thing. So yeah, it was cool. New Jersey, New Jersey has a lot of flack for, you know, what exit are you off the turnpike? You see, there's a lot of green there. There's farms. There's yeah. a lot of magical places in New Jersey. People have to explore it. Yeah, man, I was surprised. There's like a river, there was trees. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. That's not what you envision when you think of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, I want to I want to get into your guys' kind of working relationship uh, a little bit because I think that that's something we have in common and, and kind of talk through that. But before I do, just kind of wanted to set the stage for Dental Nacho specifically. Like, how did that get started? Well, it was Mary's great idea to come up with the name of the company. So let Mary, Mary start. Was it really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, so Paul was, even before Dental Nacho started, Paul was such an organizer. He was always creating like cool study clubs, rising club. Yeah. What was it called? Rising Club. Rising Club, Dennis, Philadelphia. Study club Philadelphia. My dad was an amazing dentist, had a partner. And one thing that really bothered me was how dentists were not nice to each other, felt they were competitors. This is caused by the dental student hunger games where they make people compete <laughs> over dumb things. And I just started a study club after my residency with the agenda of maybe if dentists got together earlier in their career, they would hate each other less later. So when, you know, prior to Dental Nachos, I was doing this locally with having study clubs, bringing speakers, having fun events. I've only had a few jobs, like I was a restaurant server. So I had these relationships with bars where they would let me use the bar, bring in the sponsors. So yeah, it was a permutation yeah, I think of that. Yeah, that, you were always working with residents. Um, you were speaking, you were really interested in speaking. Yeah. Um, and I think dental nachos, you were doing a little practice transitions, even yeah. then, like you always did a little bit of everything. Dental nachos itself started when he was on this group text message with his friends from dental school and yeah. you guys were texting a lot, yeah. sharing ideas. And I think at one point I was like, why don't you just start a Facebook group with them? And you did. And yeah. it started just them. We thought of the name dental nachos because- yeah. Well, obviously, Paul loves Mexican food. I do. Yeah. It's, we it's go very probably true. Probably once or twice a week. My restaurant <laughs> server days, which I learned so much about systems, was at a place called Casa Lapita in uh, central New Jersey. Corporate place. They had all kinds of systems. They gave us handbooks. Really learned a lot about how to run a business there. But um, I was like a, a chubby uh, little kid. And I thought that like, I love the food, the places that would give you the food when you sat down while you were waiting for the food. I mean, there's yeah. a South Park joke about this. So yeah. the ground round in Casa Pita, the ground round would give you popcorn. Casa yeah. Pita would give you chips. So I always said, mom and dad, can we go to Casa Pita? Because I knew that, you know, I would get chips while we were ordering. And uh, I worked there when I was older. And I just, I love Mexican flavors. I love sharing stuff. You know, the nacho metaphor is, you know, nachos are meant to be shared between friends, but it gets messy. There's, there's a stand-up comedian who has a very funny bit about who goes for that last chip on the plate. Like you'll fight yeah. your grandmother for it. So, you know, I thought it was a good metaphor for dentistry. Mary thought... I do these different things like speaking, I'm a broker, I'm a practice owner, like a lot of toppings. And that's where, that's how it started. Yeah, I, I love the metaphor. It's like, it just keeps on giving. We find all kinds of yeah. new uses for it. And you guys are probably queso and you know? walk and all of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I worked at a restaurant when I was in high school called Cheddar's and they served um, like literally biscuits. Oh yeah. The cheddar like biscuits. Cheddar biscuits, warm biscuits. You could do a lot with that too. They're very popular too. That's, that, that, I, I, I'm equal to the lover, lover of carbs. You could also gain a ton of weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. So I left. Yeah. Well, so now today, like, I mean, Dental Nachos is arguably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, Facebook group out there in dentistry. Did you ever think that, like, that would happen? Like, did you, I mean, was that ever like a, no. an aspiration? I thought there'd be like a, a few hundred people talking about implants and practice management. There's all different Facebook groups happening at that time. There's been this explosion in an awesome way of being able to create unique Facebook groups or social media groups to share your story. There's one for moms, there's one for practice owners. You know, I always, you know, I, I was kind of writing on Mother's Day, 
about my own mom, like, you know, I don't have to be the best, but I want to try to be my best or your best. So while there are ones like my friend Lincoln Harris once runs one in Australia, that's 83,000 dentists worldwide. So that's bigger wow. than dental nachos. And there's also awesome small ones. Dental nachos is for everyone, right? It's for uh, dental office team members. It's for friends. It's for sponsors. And I just think having this group conversation in dental nachos about what's happening in the industry it gets spicy, like a nacho topping, but also let's see people see other people's perspe uh, perspective. Mary, you can ask her what her original job was because I feel like that some days uh, running the group, uh, a kindergarten teacher. So, you know, it's like, hey, you know, you don't have to yell at that person, tell them they're the most stupid person you ever met and you can say it differently. So, you know, we could talk a little about how online context is different than in-person context. Yeah, yeah, which is such an important conversation. Mary, what's your role with it right now? So I'm the marketing director at Dental Notches and Dental Dentist Job Connect, as well as the HR person. Okay. <laughs> and you know, you guys know, and I think like as a couple business, you know, it's filling in the queso gaps when you need things filled in. Yeah. You know, companies like a family, and I think it's that goes both ways. Families are get close, families have friction, uh, families have fun, you know. You know, I'm not someone who really curses a lot, but you know, effed up things happen in families, and that's what happens in companies. And you know, it needs people who are you know running the thing to fill in the gap. So Mary's really great at also just filling in the queso gaps of what small businesses or businesses need to run outside yeah. of the name scope of your business. So it's a uh, it's been great working together. You know, it's it's given us a, a opportunity to work on this project together. You know, prior when Mary was a kindergarten teacher, I was only a dentist. We didn't have these shared things. So I really think it's a cool opportunity for us to spend more time together than we would if we didn't have it. Yeah. What out of those roles, like what do you what do you enjoy most? Or, or if you had to just pick one of them and it was completely full time, like all your attention, which one? I know that's a hard question because I really, yeah. I really like being kind of involved in a little bit of everything. Um, but I I love the branding. I've always been, you know, super involved in that. Um, just kind of what we stand for, the imaging, how we appear to others, being consistent. Yeah. Um, I also really like the some parts of HR. I love, you know, finding our awesome team members. We have an amazing team. We have an amazing team culture. Um, that's really important to me too. Yeah. What um Go for it. Well, good job um, yeah. <laughs> on, on the recruiting and hiring aspect. I mean, I uh, you know do a lot of that for Studio 88 as well. And so I realize how time in intensive it is, um, but you have done such a good job, you guys, of like finding awesome team members for yes. Dental Nachos. I mean, because I've like, we've, you know, hung out with them, interact with them so much now in the past year. And I'm like, I love your team. Like they're truly phenomenal. Yeah. That's 100% Mary's gets all the comp, uh, credit for that. And, you know, I think also, also <laughs> one of the things I want to point out is, you know, I only do like a few things well, you know, I speak, I do dentistry, but like I lose my AirPods when they're in my ears. I can't fix anything. I can't cook anything. So I have all these opportunities for improvements, what people call weaknesses. But, you know, one of the things I do, and I think Josh, you mentioned it when you were here kindly, said, you know, Paul can just pop into interview mode and do an interview and speak. And I ran the boost camp. I love all that stuff, right? So I would go to speak to dental students and they, you know, I'm like 30 and they're like, you know, would you come to speak to the Young Women's Dentist Society? And I go, you know, I'm like a 30 year old man. And they're like, you <laughs> could try. And I can't try, right? Because I'm not their people and I'm not the, their role models. So what Mary did over the pandemic, you know, she ran some great interviews with Lonnie Grass about diversity and all the things we're dealing with. And it's, I think it's really cool that Mary gets to share her story as a non-dentist married to a dentist. They're special people, right? Uh, as a Mrs. Nacho. And I just think that makes people, the whole point of dental notch is to make people feel less alone make people feel more like they matter. And I think her doing that really helps. Yeah. Do you enjoy doing that, Mary? Or does it kind of freak you out? Um, I enjoy doing it. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, you, always... but you, you've gotten some good prep. We've had some good people like Terry Brocks and stuff. Yeah, for that, sure. You know, with, do, with it, doing things on, on Zoom is a lot different than doing things in person, but she's done oh, a yeah. great job, you know, uh, doing that. I think we need to, I don't, I don't know if fair if extroverts and introverts are always the fairest way to describe people. Right. Mm -hmm. they, kind of come with, they come, they kind of come with some baggage, I think, but there's, you know, just tendencies, right. You know, I'm going to party talkative people are, are less talkative than me, but I think when you 
bring people out of their comfort zone a little bit and get them to do these awesome things that we all get to see how cool they are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, watching Joanna do some podcasts and stuff this last year was, uh, it's been fun. It's been a, a great experience. Her voice needs to be out there. So it's, yeah. it's important. Yeah. So when I'm not usually the stage person, he is like the speaker. Right. Um, and I typically don't actually want to be on the stage, but I do love like, I do love podcasting, especially like my podcast podcast is video driven. So that's a lot of fun because I love to see faces, you know, and interact with people like that. Um, and so I think you just have to find the stuff that like suits your strengths and personalities. So I love that you're doing that, Mary. Okay. Yeah. I, we, I've actually, I've kind of taken a pause from doing it, but during the pandemic, I, I actually enjoy being the one interviewing. <laughs> Um, but we yeah. had some awesome people on and got to yeah. talk about some really cool things. Well, I want to circle back to your team because, um, yeah, Joanna brought that up, which was awesome. But your team has always seemed very engaged, um, very like, like there's this energy level that's intentionally brought at this kind of level. Mm -hmm. How, how have you found team members to kind of represent that and engage so well with you? And what have been some of the keys in that process? What did you say, Mary? Um, well, I guess, I mean, we go through a few different levels when we're interviewing, um, you know, first of all, like on paper and their experience. Um, you can tell a lot from what people say about themselves even before you meet them, um, mm -hmm. how they speak, how they communicate, their attitude, their confidence. I feel like a lot of it is just right there in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't actually end up interviewing that many people. Um, but when I do, I find I can tell right away they either have this kind of energy and enthusiasm and always the people we hire say that, you know, something about they want to make a difference or they want to help people or they want to do something that they believe in. Um, that's always huge. Um, and then the rest kind of comes together. And I'll, I'll just add that, you know, uh, Disney World makes, I don't know if they still do it, but they would make every person who worked there dress up like a character at least one day a year. So they would feel what it was like to be goofy and have like six year olds run up to you. So I role model, I mean, I'm kind of described as like a friendly nacho tornado. No one's supposed to have as much energy as I do. That comes with pros and cons, but what their expectations are is to showcase their best self in a way that their ABCing will always be connecting. So Josh was at Rosie's. So everyone's expected to hold a margarita or nachos, whatever you like, and talk to people. And we're going to help you do that. And I, you know, bringing people out of their shell, again, that's like a very judgmental thing to say, because it, it, it assumes that someone's shell is bad, but it just helps them lit, show their best selves to people in a way that they're comfortable, right? So while I would never say to a team member, hey, you got to run the next talking nachos and interview six people for me, I say, hey, one of the things here is coming to a nacho working event at Rosie's Taco Shop like Joshua's, that's expected. It's expected you to know some people ahead of time and expected you to ask things like, what's your favorite TV show? You know, what's your favorite movie? So one of my favorite things is to try to make people feel more uncomfortable being mildly uncomfortable. Yeah. And then at the end, Mary, people usually say, I'm glad I did that or they like those parts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now you can tell that you've done that because honestly, like working, we're, I was having this conversation with my son recently about working a room and mm -hmm. how it's, you know, I'm, I'm actually introverted and he is too. And, and there was a time in my life where I'd go in and an event like that would make me feel very awkward. And you kind of just sit there and the less people talk to you, the more awkward it would get. And finally you're just like yeah. frozen, but you know, it's, it's a skill set you can learn regardless of how introverted, extroverted you are. And you know, now it's like you can walk into a room and just like know what to do. Um, but it's it's obvious you've taught your team like some of those skills and how to do that, which is cool. I appreciate that. You know, you guys did the same when you came to, came to the shoot. You guys make the hard stuff look easy because you're good yeah. at it, right? You walk to dental office teams that you've never met who typically are not the easiest people to deal with and you get them to sit on chairs and put arms around each other. And that is really awesome, but that takes real training. You know, everything that matters needs a system and everything matters. So when we were preparing for super nice business boost, when Mike came, some of the expectations, some of the systems were don't talk to each other. Do 
going to any of the events, only talk to someone you don't know. Yeah. So it's sort of like that's their expectations. So they're not supposed to be in a corner talking to each other. And, and then when they have those reasonable guidelines, magic happens. They make yeah. new friends and they're glad they did it. Like, you know, I have no real amazing advice for your son, but, you know, probably like if you said, hey, next event, talk to two people you don't know initially, tell me what happens. And he might probably going to come back and say, man, I'm glad I did that. Yeah. You know, sometimes people will never do that unless they get that kind yeah. guidance outside of the comfort zone. Yeah. So yeah. True. No, it's, it's true too. Cause even like with, um, you brought up our photographers and videographers, we like step number one is like, okay, you're talented. Awesome. Mm-hmm. That's not going to get you the job though. Um, right. the second part of that is you got to work really well with people because you're walking into a dental practice. And the truth is like their doctor may have just told them yesterday, like, oh, we're getting, you know, photography tomorrow. And they're like, what? And so you got to, you're walking into like almost awkwardness all the time. You got to be able to take control of that room, get a vibe up, get the energy up and, and do great work. So yeah, when I'm interviewing, you know, video producers or photographers, I'm like, hey, there's something called um, woo, and it stands for winning others over. Um, I don't know if you guys know the Clifton Strengths assessment. Oh. Um, well, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Also known as like the Strengths Finder was its original name. Oh, yeah, that one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so woo, and so I, I tell them like woo stands for winning others over. When you walk into a room, can you direct the room and accomplish the goal? What needs to happen? But can you also rally? you know, make people feel comfortable, help their dentists, like calm their nerves before their one-on-one interview. You know what I mean? You have to be able to do both. Yeah. Yeah. You're, I mean, your team is getting, uh, I mean, it's getting large now. There's quite a few people on it. You guys got your own office space there in downtown Philly. We got to see, which was a ton of fun. Has that transition from like solo producer dentist to, like leading a team? Has that been easy for you or give me some thoughts on that? For me as the founder, I'll let Mary talk about it. I mean, I think there's something, I was just uh, watching some of this, you know, the solopreneur, whether it's a general dentist, whether it's a a videographer, whether it's any type of entrepreneur, there's some romance to it, right? Because you can kind of be on your laptop working anywhere. But they said, it's also a lot of risk because if your two clients that are big clients, they said in this webinar, leave you, then you have no money, right? To go (laughs) sit on a laptop at a beach. I like to bring as many people as possible along for these fun journeys is that's just my personality type. So I like growing and adding people to it. You know, what I thought was cool about a dental nachos type company during the pandemic, we could run from our house during the pandemic. We could be on zoom affecting. We had a thing with 500 people mid pandemic versus CE. So I thought that was cool, but there's also, since I do both, I have a dental office and a, you know, this type of business and Mary was a teacher you know, Mary went to school, but you didn't really bring the kids home with you, right? Right. And there is some difficulty sometimes getting what people call as either work-life balance. I don't know if that's like just a, a myth, but just the separation between your work life and your home life. So now that we have a headquarters where people go to, it's been an improvement. I don't know. What do you think? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going like to say. A constant balancing act with put. It, I mean, it's it's us. We have to put down the boundaries and decide yeah. after a certain time, like we're not talking about work or mm-hmm. not on social media related to work or that kind of thing. Yeah. How do you, how do you manage? That was one of my questions. How do you manage that balance? Cause obviously you're, you're practicing almost an hour away. You're living in downtown Philly. You've got two girls that you're getting to school, you know, in town. And so how, how does all that, how does the work-life balance look like for you? How do you talk about that? Do you want to go first? I mean, I tend to be someone who focuses on the positive. So like when I have to go to my dental office, I can't take my daughter to school, right? Not that that's some terrible thing. My dad was that growing up. So I, when I go to my dental office and I have an 8.30 a.m. patient, I leave at 7.10 with Jeff. He's always on time, right? So I better be on time to leave with Jeff. And I'm off the grid the whole day, but I'm clearly I'm working and then I'm home, right? It's very, very black and white. In this work-life balance, you know, I'm taking Daphne to school this morning, which I love, right? Walking Tilly, you know, helping, but then, so I can do that and pop back into work, pop out. So there's some real flexibility and I love spending time with my family as much as possible, but there's also stress because it's hard to turn it off. So if you have the answer to that, I think you guys could stop doing (laughs) Studio 8 
and just go around the world telling people that because I'm still searching for that answer of a balance, but trying not to be overly judgmental, but also not to be overly obsessed with work. And it's very difficult because when this is where your work is, unlike a dental office, it's always there that you can do. And yeah. sometimes that's amazing. And sometimes it's awesome. You know, sometimes I've dropped you off at ballet and go sit and have coffee and I'm working for 30 minutes when I wouldn't be doing anything else. But then other times, you know, Mary will say, can you put down your phone and not work? So, I mean, feel free to share your angle of it. Yeah. I mean, it's a little easier for me. I just feel like I'm constantly, well, Paul's like a multitasker. He kind of yeah. tends to do it all constantly, whereas I'm more running around, like managing different segments of my life. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's usually like the girls and the drop-offs and then running to the office and we throw a dog into the mix. So, <laughs> you know, walk it, coming back to the office, the girls pick up. And then usually once I'm home with the girls, I'm off, like totally. Um, but then when it's Paul and I, again, we slip into, you know, talking about business a lot. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, I, would, I, I love that. And I think it's, I was thinking about this question earlier and I have been all year actually. I think that it's so important. Like all of us have to define our priorities at home at, you know, for the business and then even like personally for self. And then I think it's throughout different seasons, you know, getting the support that you need to make sure you're not compromising those priorities at work, at home for yourself. And so I think lately, like him and I have been talking about we need an assistant. We need a home, like a house manager. We need yeah. like somebody for work, for business to help us. You know, um, I have a, a friend who comes and cleans our home because I'm like, I would rather spend time with my kids when they get off the bus and they're, you know, here and be engaging with them rather than running around after I'm done working like a crazy person. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think that support I think is like- your- SSC, your success and sanity coordinator of your life. <laughs> yes. Everyone needs that. And, you know, yeah. uh, I'll, you know, I'll share, you know, maybe this, this our interview will go viral. People look at it years from now. <laughs> As someone who really has done both, right? You know, I still do both. I still practice. I'm in my office right now on Mondays. But I've been a dentist. You know, I had a life before dental nachos. Very familiar with working as a dentist four days a week, three days a week. It's the boundaries are far more clear when you are yeah. having a dentist type person thing with you. You could be a stylist who does hair. You could be someone who does manicures. When you are providing a service on people, for people in a location, it's a very clear boundaries. Then when you step out and have an entrepreneurial type journey or work from home journey, I mean, I'm sure these, there's many people right now working from home who think they love working from home, but they work more than when they went to an office because they yeah. don't know how to turn it off. And yeah. sometimes that's awesome because they're helping their companies, but sometimes that's not so awesome when they don't have boundaries that they set. So, I mean, it's a, it's a really difficult thing. And that's why that is an, I believe, an advantage of dentistry. I always say, growing up, you can't take your patients home to your house and work on their teeth because dentists would do that if that was a thing. They'd say, Joanna, we're not finished. Come sit on my couch. I got to put my kids to bed. I'm going to work on that filling. Yeah. We do that yeah. all the time with our tests. Oh, yeah. Man. I One of the things I think that's been resonating with me the last year or two is the thought that our life isn't normal and that's okay. Yeah. And I think like when we, that work-life balance creates, there's pressure created when we kind of look at, you know, I'm looking out my windows here, like the rest of the community, like the way they live and their work-life balance. I'm like, it's, it's not us. And and I think some of it too is like, you think like, oh, well, what's best for the kids? And if we have that type of balance, the kids would be, but the, I'm like, our kids are going to have an amazing childhood growing up because of what we're doing and our life isn't normal. Um, like the last week of school, they're missing their last three days of school because they're going to Jamaica because I'm speaking. Okay. So, you know, things like that, where it's just like, in the end, I think you can kind of look at the negatives like, oh, we're not doing enough, we're not doing enough, not enough balance. But at the end, I'm like, but there's so much positive because our life just looks different. Um, so do you guys have rules or boundaries when it comes to working together and the personal life? Like, is there a certain time you shut off? Is it like phones down? Is it no significant conversations after a certain point or any of that? One of the things I'll share, Mary can share her things. This is a great, great conversation to have is, I believe, you know, I'm part of Vistage's business group, which has been great for me. I feel like it's a new mom's 
group for founders. Mary was part of this amazing new moms group where we're, you know, she's going to share friends from that. I believe when you're doing this thing, like having a child ages zero to five, it's probably more stressful in some ways than five to 25, right? So right now, if we think of our business as really like three and a half years old, um, we don't have, I don't have as many rules and boundaries as I would for my dental practices, right? That business is like 20 years old. So yeah. I would not be working on a treatment plan at my front, at my mm. kitchen table at 8 p.m. at night. Mary never saw me do that prior to Dental Nachos because it was a very mature business, still has tons of challenges, still has things that get me, but I was able to manage it. It was like, you know, a 20 year old business, think of a 20 year old person to me. And I, I don't want this to seem like an, it's an excuse for always working, but when you have a three or four year old business, I think of it like a three or four year old child, and it just needs attention to make it successful, to make it survive, to make it thrive. So, um, I don't think of too many hard rules for, but maybe you guys want to inspire some and we'll have some after this conversation. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's one of the most challenging parts really like of life, just like giving yourself boundaries and sticking to them. I, I think it's especially hard for entrepreneurs because, you know, there's always something you could be doing and there's always, you know, kind of like pressure, financial pressure, and it's hard to just, stop. Like, I also like, want to yeah. give Mary a compliment, but also some kind of annoyance. You know, she's become this photographer where people really like her. And yesterday she had a photo shoot for people's graduation. And at the graduation shoot, they asked if you could do their uh, engagement photos, right? Mm -hmm. So when she came back from that entrepreneurial journey, she's saying, should I do the shoots here? Should I do them here? And I, I, if I said, oh, this is not business time right now, I think she would have rolled her eyes at me because, <laughs> because I, I think it's a taste of you're doing this entrepreneurial photography thing. It doesn't come with schedules like dental offices and it just needs to be addressed now. And what I always say is like things like me, I get up and people like throw tennis balls at me and like, I got to throw some back and people go, Oh, just don't, don't do them. I go, there's just going to be more tennis balls tomorrow. Right. Like, like, you know, if you said to your dentist, and I'll just give you a, some dental insight. Dentists like to handle emergencies for their patients, crown off, broken tooth, pain for two reasons. One, because they want to help people. And two, because they don't want to deal with it tomorrow. Mainly because they want to help people. But my dad did this all the time. Bring him in. I'll see Josh Scott. Put him in the other room. See if his night guard's broken. Mainly because he wants to help. But also because he didn't want that to pile up tomorrow. So if you said to a dentist, just tell your emergency patients they can all come next week. They would look at you like they, you had four heads. But they tell me, Joe, just turn your phone off, right? Just turn it off. And they don't really, it's not totally fair feedback on something when they don't really know what's happening inside of that. So I don't know if that mm -hmm. now marries photography. I'm, I'm just going to become <laughs> the, the, the husband of Mrs. Nacho, the photographer, and do that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's uh, super interesting. I've never heard anyone talk about it like that. Hmm. Almost like we can show ourselves grace because of the nuances that just come at you as entrepreneurs, you yeah. know? Yeah, because you, so you can't control you can't control the intake a lot of times in the entrepreneurial world way I, the way I can in my dental practice, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, nobody really expects me to do their emergency at eleven thirty p.m. at night, but I'll get a Facebook message eleven thirty p.m. while we're watching Ghost. It's a good new show. We finished it. We always, I always get mad when you finish a show because you're like, now it's done, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, you know, we I do. Finish it, we finish each thing, yeah. <laughs> and I like I see it, and I'm like, yeah, part of my brain's like, I shouldn't deal with it. But then part of our brain is like, I'm just going to be dealing with it at 6.30 a.m. Like, I'm just going to deal with it. So, mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm sure that's not 100% healthy, but I wouldn't call it 100% toxic either. Yeah. 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 It's probably, we, we've probably settled on, there's a little bit of a dance with just like at night or kind of after hours where it's, you know, it's based on kind of the other person's mood and energy level. And you're kind of trying to read that. And there's some times where it's like, we have the best conversations around business in the evenings or while I'm cooking dinner or at night or whatever. But then there are some times when those same conversations are massively draining mm -hmm. and it's just like, yeah. I, I can't, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we kind of have like a no significant conversation after nine o'clock type yeah. rule. But I also think it's just kind of reading the other person, yeah. you know, sometimes I'm like, how was your day? anything interesting happening and kind of like seeing where it goes, you know, and, and if it's, you know, she engages with me and, I, and look, I'm, I'm the more complicated one out of the two of us for sure. I think she would probably talk anytime. There's sometimes I just like grunt. I'm like, yeah, it's good. Anything interesting? Yeah. No? 
Yeah. <laughs> but also, I'll, I'll kindly know your personality type and in some ways, Justin and Mary's like it because like, it's like the person who wants to kind of like have like a, a dessert when you don't want to have it. I mean, I'll be like, you want chocolate? I'm like, not right now. It's like, you sure you don't want chocolate? Like, not right now. I'm like, you know, you could have chocolate. If I don't eat chocolate, <laughs> Mary's kind of the person who wants me to eat chocolate with her at the time. So it's right. a balancing act between the two personality types, neither wrong or right, but also, you know, yeah. just understanding each other's tendencies. Totally. How do you guys negotiate when you don't see eye to eye on something? That's good. You want to? <laughs> like talking and talking and talking and kind of sharing how we feel yeah. until usually we end up seeing each other's points or meeting somewhere in the middle. Yeah, we, we have a lot of shared understanding goals and a lot of things, but a lot of differences. I played a lot of sports growing up. Mary didn't. It doesn't not wrong. Right? She did drama and other things. So I feel like a play is similar. I'm used to being in organizations where there's a coach and I'm the player. And I might not want to run purple 42 play, but the coach says we're going to run purple 42 play. And I don't resist it because it's the coach. It's it's yeah. some of the things I'm most grateful for. Restaurants, things like that. Doesn't mean Mary doesn't have this, but we try to define things where it's like, this is your thing. You're in charge of it. And sometimes you have to remind each other we're in charge of that thing. And you can say, give a lot of feedback, firm feedback. But if you're in charge of it, you get to be in charge of it. And I try really hard in my company life dental office to put those boundaries my dad and i did it very well you know he was in charge of ordering the supplies i was in charge of the personnel and he could give a lot of people he would give some strong feedback jennifer stinks we shouldn't have her i appreciate that dad i'm in charge of that these paper towels fall apart you're in charge of it so i know it's kind of a uh i don't know not a silly example but easy but I, we try to do that right yeah, like Mary's in charge of marketing. I don't really come and say, this Canva, this should be over here, right? I never do that, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> Might be the other one. Right? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, have, I mean, I have a lot of opportunities for improvement, tons of them, but I, I'm very lucky to have lived a life where I've been on both sides of the boss and not the boss, and I just really understand it well, and I don't yeah. fight it. Yeah. Any, like... If there's couples out here, out there kind of watching this that are working together as well, any, any tips you guys have learned or tricks to make it more enjoyable to kind of like not lose the sense of your marriage in it kind of thing? What did you say, Mary? I don't know. I, I'd say, I, I mean, honestly, I think it's like been more fun since yeah. we started working together because like you said, we're, it's kind of like this project we have and we're in it together and we, you know, very much have the same goals with it. And I think that also helps when we disagree on yeah. things because we like know exactly where each other are coming from in the end. Um, For sure. I mean, also, I think rem we remind each other about the impact we have to have on people. ROI, relationships, opportunity, impact. Obviously, you know, you guys supporting us at the Super Dance Boost was awesome with Mike. That was sort of our Super Bowl. And, you know, our team said on Monday, you know, we asked them what their favorite part was. It was really that we got to change these people's lives. So just like a dental office that works really hard and gets a lot of annoying feedback when they have that Pauline Perkins patient who's amazing, Je uh, Joanna, you remember that. So we kind of remember the impact that we're having. And then to me, you know, I'm really proud that Mary has developed all these great relationships with people through Dental Nachos, like Joanna Scott, but also like people that we we work with. And I know I think that's kind of the coolest part of it too, is these relationships you get to develop that you wouldn't without the business. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. We talk about that often. I, that's one of our favorite things is honestly like, like, wow, we actually have like what we feel are really authentic friendships in yeah. in the profession you know and like it's so fun when we get to jump on a, a you know a live with you guys or a call or see you at an event it's like oh like there are our friends um i think mm -hmm. you yeah i think you can actually really genuinely build connections um throughout anything that you do yeah. i mean it transcends the business because i mean we have people who have moved you know i'm not just a, i work for i only had like three jobs i don't know if i mentioned this but like i worked for bloomberg when i was 16 years old now almost 30 years ago 
amazing guy, amazing company. Like they kind of invented the internet. I remember like there was no internet back there, but the Bloomberg computer would have these little news things. Like I don't remember that one time I'm um, sadly Monica Sells was stabbed at the French Open. And we all knew when I was 16 years old, that went by my computer before the rest of the world knew. So Bloomberg was just a visionary, right? And he would he would hire all these amazing college grads from awesome schools. And if they worked for him for two years, cool. He didn't care. It worked from three years. Cool. He didn't care. I love that attitude because, you know, it transcends the business because you're friends with people who are no longer part of Dental Nachos that you consider to be your friends. Yeah, you know, if I do become a professional basketball player and give up on Dental Nachos, guys, I expect us to still be friends. So, you know, <laughs> um, that to me, I think is the, you have to remember that through the daily, in, we, we don't call say stress in Dental Nachos, we say intensity. So we say the daily intensity of what we do. So mm-hmm. it's a really good question. Well, man, as long, as long as I get basketball tickets from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. the senior NBA. No one yeah. maybe you want to see the senior be lower the rim to eight feet, right? You know, like the senior yeah. PGA Tour of golf. Yeah. Yeah. No, but um, Mary, I love what you said because I think that that's probably, there's probably a bigger thing there of, of making sure like what you're doing is missional. Like you feel like it's, it's important work, like it's impactful. And I think that anytime we probably veer off course from each other, it's probably coming back to that type of, you know, this little thing probably doesn't matter as much in the scheme of things yeah. because we really feel like this is the impact we're making. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Joanna and I are both pretty missional. We've grown up that way. And mm-hmm. um, she's been in nonprofit world most of her life behind supporting really amazing missions. And so I think some of her working at Studio 88 was like, do I feel like they're making enough impact where I can, yeah. you know, like identify and support it? So um, yeah. I think so it was kind of interesting. Me. I mean, I, I love that, John. I think what's interesting, and maybe some of this is cliche, but you know, these people make millions of dollars, they retire, they become billionaires, and then they want to go do charity work, which is awesome. Yeah. But it's like, what if you could try to infuse some of that into what you're doing anyway, right? Remember, I may mean, not be a billionaire, so I might as well help along the way. But I always think that's kind of a human nature thing, you know? Oh, what are you going to do to retire? I'm going to be on the board of this charity. What do you want to retire? I'm going to start volunteering on a local thing. So I think if you can blend that into what you do in your own way, I just think it makes your business and life and team a lot more, a lot more fun and, you know, meaningful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, being business owners, I got just a couple more questions here. Being business owners, there's never a shortage of problems. And I usually kind of throw this out there on my, my go lives, kind of this for me personally, but how do you, how do you prioritize those? Like, how do you face the, you know, whether you wake up today and there's a new problem or this week or whatever, and then what problems are you currently working on? You want me to go first? You go first. You can go first. I mean, being trained as a restaurant server and a dentist, you're used to having a lot of drop nachos. Nothing goes off script. Nothing goes wrong in my life. Just goes off script. So a lot of off script things. I said this at Boost. Every dentist, every dentist in the history of dentist dentistry and office marriage, you get a text before seven a.m. Never a good one. Okay, not once. Yeah. It's been good. My yeah. child's sick. I can't come. So I, I have developed resilience. I guess and resilience sounds exciting and good maybe scar tissue of waking up and expecting drop nachos i always think you know is it is this is this issue involved with someone's safety if no great someone's health no great someone's you know livelihood no great and we just have to deal with them i mean it's it's a the biggest issue we're dealing on right now with both dental nachos dentist shop connect and our dental office is maintaining consistency with teams because some people are changing their jobs for great reasons. Some people are changing because they move across the country and some people it's not the right fit for them. And this has happened in my dental office and otherwise. So I think the biggest exhaustion as a business owner is you put a lot of time into training and onboarding and doing it. And then someone says, Hey, this has been great, but I'm going to move on. And sometimes you're super happy for it. Right. But then you're also super crying anxiety for yourself because I go to these so I would say that would be uh, systems is the way we deal with them. I mean, a lot of people say that, but we do strive to have, you know, like Mark Costa says, a systems-based organization. But I would say right now, I've dealt, I'm going to share with this. I've dealt with more team challenges in the last two years than the last 20 years of being a business owner. Yeah. And that to me is, is ours. What would you say, Mary? Probably the same one. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I, I mean, I, I think with my teaching background or just the kind of person I am, I like to go into like my days and weeks with like a plan and, you know, similar to lesson plans. I know what I want out of the day. I, you know, I'm ready to come in and do them. And it actually throws me really off when, you know, there's like an emergency or pause, you know, like, oh my God, this is happening. And then, you know, I jump in because that's the first priority, but then, yeah. you know, it really pains me that I'm not pushing forward what I want to be pushing forward. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then, I mean, I agree right now, just trying to find some awesome new team members to join our companies because I mean, it's positive that we're yeah. growing and um, especially our job connect company. I want to use a sports analogy because I just thought we were talking about, I've said this all the time in dental practices, you know, our main dental assistant for our periodontist, their son is sick and now we have to cancel a $10,000 day. It's such a vulnerable business. And what I think, you know, I just thought of this in this moment, every single sports team has benches, right? They have five people playing the game and then seven people waiting to play the game. And we call that normal. In every other business, we got no bench, right? Because it doesn't work into the final. But it'd be great if we had a bench. I mean, it sounds like probably something that would never happen. But if you had three people you were training to be on your bench that could pop in when you needed them, but somehow you could pay them to train, we'd be better. But it's just this sometimes these abrupt changes in your business. I'm sure you guys deal with them too that those are the biggest challenges. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, and it's interesting right now, dentistry is in a unique spot in this country um, post pandemic, but I, I'm in, from a marketing perspective of seeing you know, dozens and hundreds of practices, I think most of them right now don't necessarily have a marketing problem. Like the, the growth is out there, it's a capacity problem. And most of them would have probably an amazing year if they could keep an entire team staffed and there at the, at the practice. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, my marketing, it's interesting because the conversations have shifted a little bit even into like, how do I market to like recruit it? Like for recruiting, how do I, even the whole concept of like building a site that tells your story is it for new patients? Yeah, but it's also for team, oh, future absolutely. team members and totally mission vision. and vision. So it's marketing is kind of taking on a, some new value in like having to recruit as well, uh, which I think is, is interesting. Mm -hmm. So I think I would like to add this one point because, you know, it was mother's dad, the most awesome mom, which was not alive anymore. But I remember, you know, your mom would say, do you know how lucky you are? And you never felt lucky when someone said that, right? <laughs> they were about to rain down how unappreciative you were, right? And I actually said this to my own daughter. So I was like, I'm just like my mom. So I, I want to apologize to her because I sort of was like, we're doing this thing for you. But dental offices, if I give them some inspiration, but also some kind of noise, they really need to motivate themselves to make their jobs a little more fun for their team members. Because now that I run multiple businesses, working in Dental Nachos at 1500 Walnut where Josh came and working in this company, it's a lot more fun than being in a dental office. And yeah. it, it, you just have to create relevance and fun because we're at a place in a dental office where no one really wants to go. And while it can be very intense in this building, it's a pretty fun place, you know, people wearing hoodies, right? It's very different than a dental office. So I would give them just this, sort of motivation to figure out how to do that because I think there's not as many people who just want to be involved in working in a dental office and it's going to be a crisis in the industry. And yeah. I, I, I don't want to say I can't blame them because I have an amazing team at my dental office and they love what they do. We just need to reframe some of the positivity of working in a dental office. Yeah, yeah. Which shout out to your hoodies, by the way. Probably the softest. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Ever. Good for I the gym it. and formal events. Yeah, yeah. They're so great. I was walking around the street with hers, and people were giving you compliments, right? Yeah. 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 I'm not a huge fan of other people's swag, no offense, world, yeah. but like yours is awesome. And that hoodie, Thanks. I was like, Josh, I'm going to be living in this. <laughs> yeah, <thank you. laughs> this whole winter, I wore pretty much at home, like not during work, but like after hours, you know, the matching like sweatshirt and, and yeah. like jogger pants or sweatpants, right? They're super trendy, like Nike sells and whatever. Well, I mean, I just got, I was like, these are so comfortable. Forget <laughs> yoga pants. <laughs> Thanks. Just yeah, one yeah, day, welcome. Josh, he never says this stuff to me, but he was like, he looked at me and he was like, did you just give up? <laughs> <laughs> That's I like that. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, funny. oh, man. Well, hey, I, I, I want to wrap up here with um, a couple last questions. But what's what's the next three to five years look like for you guys? What's what's exciting? What what are you kind of foreseeing down the road? 
You go first. Sure. Um, uh, I think it's exciting. It, Paul has a million ideas yeah. and Demo Notches is just bouncing it with ideas. Um, it's funny because Demo Notches is primarily known for being, you know, the Facebook group, but, you know, it's so much more. It's all the chips that are kind of on the plate also. And um, I, it's exciting to see Dennis Job Connect, which was just kind of one of the chips on the plate, turn into kind of its own company this year. And, you know, we see that really growing. And then um, other aspects in dental nachos probably becoming their own new plates of nachos as well yeah. over the years. I see yeah. a lot of growth and just expanding on what we have now. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Uh, something happened the other day when Mary was with our dog Tilly that reminded me of the metaphor he's my dad. So the pill inside the ice cream, we had a golden retriever and needed a heartworm pill. My dad, we got the Briars vanilla ice cream. My dad would take the vanilla ice cream, put the pill inside of it, and the dog would come and eat it, not know the pill. Mary had the peanut butter and stuff with <laughs> Tilly's pill and said, I hope she eats it. So that's kind of how I like to hopefully help in my own way and be part of the solution of helping dentists and human beings do better, feel better, be less annoyed, feel less alone. So our three to five year goals keep doing that as just a general overview, but also in meaningful ways like Dennis Job Connect. I'm, we're so proud. I mean, people are working together. There's a dental student graduating this year, flying to Illinois for a job that pays them over $200,000 a year, working with an owner who's so desperate to have an associate all because of Dennis Job Connect. Yeah. And to me, Everything I knew, just like in dentistry, I like doing fillings. I mean, I don't love doing fillings, but I like implants. I like other things that those are my toppings. But that topping to me is so exciting to do more of because we're changing people's entire lives, right? Why they went to school, where they went to school. And then we're getting these enthusiastic, exhausted owners. I mean, Josh, you see a lot of us, right? It's an enthusiastic but exhausting job to run a dental practice. Right. So if you can put an associate in their life to say, here's someone to help you. So that's really one of our main focuses over the next three years as we continue to grow other stuff. That's awesome. Love it. Love it. All right. Last question. It's Friday. So what does tonight look like? What are you guys eating? What are you drinking? What do you oh, cool. do? Uh, I'll let you go first. We could do Friday and Sunday because we, we, we shifted our, we, we, you can tell what we're initially going to do on Friday. We're initially going to go to a BYO that is just two streets away from our house. Uh, but then we found out they were closed for an event tonight. So we're shifting. My friends are getting together in the suburbs for a barbecue with the kids. So we'll be doing yeah, that. We'll bring Tilly to that. Yeah. To that. Then we're going to, we, we, Mother's Day was right after Bruce. So we didn't get to celebrate it as much. So we're going to have our own Mother's Day celebration this weekend when Mary gets to pick her favorite uh, restaurant to go to. And it's all about her for the day. And we're going to do that over the weekend. But usually Fridays, we like to go out with Daphne and Drew. Now we have Tilly. We like outdoor eating. That's good in Philadelphia. Try to have a Friday relaxing time get something good to eat, uh, have like early happy hour for parents. That's what I've noticed for myself. Like, I can't, can't eat late anymore. It's like people say they can't drink late. Like if I eat a meal after 9 p.m., like I have a problem. I'm such a, yeah. my younger self would yeah. go to Budokan at midnight and be like, we're all eating. Now it's like, I, I, like my eating problem. I got eating problems. Yeah. It's like times when I eat problems, right? So yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, look, I appreciate you guys hanging out with us on a Friday. I know you've got a lot going on. Um, before we go, though, just give people like they want to connect with you online. Where's the best place? Sure. I mean, dentalnachos.com. We're proud of that website. We build a house, all of our toppings in there. So that's the easiest way to find all the things we do. But Mary, uh, maybe you can give your Instagram or how can people follow you on Instagram? Yeah, sure. Uh, we, you could follow us at Dental Nachos. Um, that's our Instagram name. Yeah. Follow me at Mrs. Nacho. Yeah, you love that name. That's it. <laughs> Dreams do come true, I always say. Who wouldn't want to be named after Mexican food? It happens, right? So, yeah, delnaz.com on Instagram. Love connecting with people. Love what you guys do. Your brand's fun. Your brand is, is shares exactly the same things we do. And really, thanks for thinking of this idea. It was fun. We got to hang out talking to you guys for yeah, an hour. This is great. Yeah, yeah for sure. Definitely. For sure. We, yeah, I was, um, I was wanting to get Paul on and um, just around the Super Dentist booth. And I was like, you know what would be fun? Let's just do a couple's version and yeah. hang out for a little bit. People days. watch more when Mary's on for many reasons. That's a good way, right? There's many ways. We did all these lives. Like mine got a hundred views. Mary didn't want to got 1500 views. I know people can comment all the reasons why, the way this face looks, the way I talk, right? But oh, I, I thought this was a really cool. You well, should make she this... is smart and beautiful, Paul. <laughs> yeah, make this, a, make this a theme. Uh, oh, thank you. Make this a theme. <laughs> More couples like this. It's really great. Really yeah, thanks for doing this. And you guys together. are foodies, so we need to like, I can't wait to go out, you know, share a meal and go out to dinner sometime soon with you guys. 
Oh, that sure. would be great. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks. That's it. That wraps it up for our episode number 39. Uh, check these guys out at Dental Nachos on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for sharing your day with us, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Bye.